Um, once again, welcome to the Linux programming and scripting uh, class. Uh, today we are going to continue with uh, the looking at optical TK from where we left off. Um, let me first summarize for you what uh, we talked about. Um, in the last uh, lecture, we talked about what is Tickle, the tool control language. Um, essentially, it is it was developed by Osterhout uh, in um, UC Berkeley. Um, again, it was originally developed as just a scripting language, mainly for um, um, just um, solving some of the difficulties with the, the existing scripting languages. So um, again, like that goes back to why we need uh, Tickle in the first place. Uh, the reason is essentially like I mean, this is one way to um, actually um, use it in applications, you know, use to run applications as well as extending the various applications. Um, so what we mean by that is um, we saw that in the last lecture that um, there are two things. Basically, one is on one side uh, of programming is all the Heavy weights essentially with um, very regular data structure um, and a um, lot of complex programming, and it, it can take like years to develop and actually bring it online. Um, whereas on the other side, we wanted um, very easy to use, um, highly interactive, um, quick development capabilities for scripting. Um, the former one essentially like where we have like very complex uh, we can write very complex programs with uh, very um, highly uh, developed data structures um, or languages like C, C++ etc. But on the other end um, if you want to like write just quick um, scripting um, that is where the tickle falls into. But one thing to understand is actually the tickle by nature is um, um, it can Actually, um, um, it's platform independent. Um, that's how the Tickle was developed. So multiple applications can be easily um, connected through by Tickle, as well as you can extend an application for uh, new user-controlled ideas um, or um, user-generated ideas using Tickle. And then uh, we also saw, like I mean, how. Uh, can we use Tickle? So essentially, it falls under this bucket as to how do we um, extend and how do we um, use the uh, um, the various applications of Tickle. So today, Tickle is um, very popular. It is used widely um, in um, many, many, many applications. You name any commercial tool today; it uh, has a Tickle interface, and uh, you can use Tickle. To interact with the tool as well as uh, extend its capabilities. One thing that we will talk about in this uh, Tickle class is also the Synopsys toolset, which you will be using extensively. And uh, Synopsys toolset, or also uh, the entire toolset, is built on Tickle, and you can use Tickle scripts to communicate um, uh, to the uh, the tool. So this is tools like uh, Design Compiler or IC Compiler, things like that. We can easily use Tickle as an extensible uh, language. Today it's not just limited to that uh, Synopsys tools, but uh, other commercial tools also use Tickle um, as their backbone. So um, today we will be um, talking about um, the more of the language constructs of Tickle. Um, so before we go into that, I wanted to just give you a brief background on to how all the uh, commands are constructed in Tickle. So um, there are two parts of learning Tickle. One is the syntax and substitution rules. We saw this one. The substitutions are simple but maybe confusing at first. So we will uh, deal with this. And then the second one is all this built in commands um, the this can be learned individually as needed uh, and then the control structures are actually command and it's not uh, language syntax so essentially like in, in tickle even the control structures we will see are just commands um, so you don't treat anything differently than any other command what that means is say like I mean if you write a command 
or any such kind of specialized application they also fall fall under the similar treatment as uh, any other command basically like a if then else which are like built in commands. So um, again we call this as not control structure but just built in commands. So we will see like I mean how um, tickle program looks like or what is the structure of a tickle program and then we will go into more details. Uh, one thing to note is tickle has no fixed grammar. So essentially um, it, it's all like um, um, there is no like um, a lexical convention as to how um, we have to program it. So um, again going back to basics tickle script is just a sequence of commands the commands are separated by new lines semicolons um, and then essentially a tickle command itself like I mean so now you look at the script is comprised of commands and the command terminations are new lines or semicolons now um, the tickle command itself each command can have one or more words separated by just white space so the white space has meaning in uh, tickle and then always it is taken as the first word as the command name and all others are arguments and the command always results in a string. So those are the things that you need to understand and you need to keep in mind um, and whenever we talk about any commands just think about these two basic um, concepts number one a tickle script is nothing but a sequence of commands and then the commands are separated by either new line or semicolons. So these are the only command terminations so if you do not terminate it with a new line it is uh, it still continues as a command. So we will see like some examples as to how this plays out um, in the in, in the real world uh, because there are these these concepts are also like confusing um, with respect to like say language like Perl where only the semicolon was um, the, the main um, Uh, the main terminator of commands and then tickle command again it is one or more words separated by white space so again that is another key difference and um, very important um, in um, other languages you do not need to separate by white space and um, even the various characters have special meanings and um, that is used as a parsing mechanism. But in tickle, it's uh, it's very simple. Basically, like the white space is treated as um, um, a word separator, and then the command actually has just uh, a number of words. And the first word is always the command name, and then the remaining ones are all arguments. And it also returns a string value. So here is one example. This command is set a and twenty two. This is the same as a equals 22 in Perl. Notice that there is no space here. We don't need to have any space between. Um, we can actually say like dollar a. Yeah, actually that that's more makes sense. So dollar in Perl is a variable, and then the assignment is assigned to 22 with the terminator as a semicolon. Whereas here, there is no dollar here. And 22, and there's no termination um, semicolon. And then another very short um, um, Perl program puts hello world. So here, notice that actually, like puts is the command name. It has only one argument right now, which is inside this quote hello world. So it just combines all of them and then just outputs that. So um, I think uh, so far so good so let us move on so in terms of how a command is parsed basically there is a division of responsibility inside the tickle parser the tickle parser has two components one is the tickle parser itself and then the other one is a command procedure so they go from the concepts that I talked about earlier so understand that 
this line is the your tickle command essentially it's just a string of characters that are coming one by one the tickle parser all it does is it chops the commands into words um, so this is one long command it basically like takes it and then it basically chops it into first word second word third word fourth word and fifth word now so mainly it so it it also makes some substitution this this part of it we will come to it it does not interpret any values of words so it does not assign anything and it is a single pass operation so every command basically the command you know that it is separated by either a new line or a semicolon so it gets all these things that that forms this command and then when it goes through the tickle parser first it just breaks it into multiple words based on just the white space character so I'll just say blank so it based on the white space character it just splits it into all these words and then it just sends these things to the command procedure which essentially interprets these words as commands whether it is there and then once the the first one actually like as the command and the remaining ones are arguments it takes in and then it processes and then it produces a string result and then that result is what is stored here. Now let us look at all these other things basically like I mean how this entire process works. So once again just to recap the there is a division of responsibility inside the tickle parser the parser the true parser basically once it gets the command which is separated by the new line or the semicolon it parses and it actually separates the whole command into multiple uh, words this chopping is based on just that blank space basically that we say and it also makes some substitutions which we will see what it is it does not interpret value of the words and it is a single pass operation then once it chops up the words it sends it to the command procedure which interprets the words it can invoke the parser recursively meaning if you have something that is another command it, it can actually like then go back to the tickle parser and expands that and then gets it and finally it produces a string result which is actually shown here as a, another string. So now let us talk about some of the things first of all um, there are arguments which are after this one all the remaining ones are the arguments right. So the parser assigns no meaning to this argument so here you can say like okay in, the, in C program X equal to 4 Y equal to X plus 10 then Y is actually 14 because this y is evaluated and then basically like the value is kept whereas in tickle if you say set x4 and set y x plus 10 the x plus 10 is just retained and basically you just get that same and the different commands assign different meanings to their arguments the type checking must be done by the command themselves again uh, we, we will we will discuss this in more details but the commands themselves has an onus to see whether they are of the same type and uh, if they are of compatible types and execute it does not um, go back to the language to provide any kind of guidance as to what it is. So here we have a set of commands first one set a 112 then we have another command called expr which actually evaluates an expression and we can see actually that there is a six point number and a floating point number so now how does this get interpreted so now the third one is basically it's an eval eval has a string as an argument and in this example the button dot b it has many many arguments actually. So button dot b has my dash text as an argument, hello is an argument, fg is an argument, and red is an argument. And now 
another command called string which has an argument of length and then another um, kind of a string but we do not know what it is but it is just uh, another word. So the string has two arguments so now this one has two arguments this has actually three arguments basically and then you have this has only one argument this one has one two three four arguments and this one has just two arguments and they are all of different 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 types so this is a string of one type here there are string arguments and all these are also like string argument here there is another string this is a floating point uh, and a fixed point this is a uh, fixed point. So again how to distinguish and how to make sure that um, they are all consistent is uh, left to the particular command that is um, uh, that's that is getting those arguments. So um, we will see like some of these examples as to how commands will interpret certain uh, arguments. Now um, we come to this variable substitution there are two main topics in tickle that um, you want to understand and once you understood those two concepts um, I think like life will be pretty much easier. The number one is the variable substitution number two will be the command substitution and this is something that we will talk about in, in a later slide but today. Um, right now, we let us talk about the variable substitution. So, the variable substitution the syntax is dollar followed by the variable name. Actually, the dollar is what gives the uh, tickle to see that okay, this is a variable and I will substitute the variable value. And uh, the variable name can be letters, digits, and underscores. It is uh, um, it's it says basically like I mean it's a, it's a white lie. The main reason is like sometimes you don't put the digits as the first one, but um, you can. Um, um, we'll see how it is. So and then the other thing is basically like um, this dollar can occur anywhere in the world in the world in the world. So now let's uh, look at some of the commands and what happens basically. So here let us say we are setting B to 66 now when we say like set A to B the result is just B notice that this is another just a value it is not the same variable in order for getting this B as 66 what do we need to put the key variable substitution syntax which is the dollar. So now in this command we set a dollar b now we get a as 66. Now what happens when we say like set a dollar b plus dollar b plus dollar b notice that even though like I mean we our intention is like 66 plus 66 plus 66 you know and evaluate that we do not have any commands for evaluation so it is just going to assign exactly the same um, variable which is it substitutes every dollar b occurrence of every dollar b by 66 so the a will be a string which is 66 plus 66 plus 66 this is not the same as um, like 196 okay so Please note that. Oh, actually, one ninety-eight. Um, it does not put it that way. It only like has the sixty-six to sixty-six to sixty-six. So now, what happens when we say like set A is dollar B dot three? So this dot actually it's also applied. So here you get sixty-six point three. Now what happens when we say like um, set a dollar b 
four. Is this the same as six six four? Actually, in this case, it just says that there is no variable because now the four becomes part of the variable name because you can see that actually the variable name is letters digits and underscores. So it treats dollar b four as a single variable and it finds that actually that is never defined. So it just complains about no such variable. Now the second aspect of it that I talked about which is the command substitution. So for the variable substitution the key character is the dollar. Now for the command substitution the key characters are this square bracket. So any script which is embedded within a square bracket it substitutes that or interprets that as a command and then executes that command. So essentially it is evaluating the script and then substitute the results. And it may occur anywhere within a world. So let us look at some example here. So here set B is 8. So um, B is set to value 8. So that is the result here. And then we say like set A as expression dollar B plus 2. So now when we say like the square brackets and then we give another function name which is uh, or a command name which is expr here. So that expr is now needs to be executed because it is kept under uh, square brackets. So now it executes this command. So when it executes the command it knows that b is 8 so it substitutes 8 here and then it actually adds this also. So there is a variable substitution and now uh, um, a command substitution as well. So now it evaluates 8 plus 2 as a command so the answer is 10 and then that it assigns to 8. So here the result is 10. Now what happens when we say like set A B minus 3 is expression B minus 3. Notice that there is no dollar in front of B so B is taken as just another just name and this whole thing is a string so it basically like it uh, puts B minus 3 as a string and then it also uses the space is as a string and then when it comes to this square brackets again it substitutes the command essentially so that is dollar B is 8 minus 3 is 5 and we get it as b minus 3 is 5 as the string that is stored in a okay now the words break at white space and semicolons except there are few rules on this Number one is the double quotes. The double quotes prevent breaks because the entire double quote is treated as just one string and then it is taken as one string. So, for example, in this one, in this example, set A dollar X is, I mean, X is dollar X and Y is dollar Y. This entire thing is assigned to A as noticed in the previous example. Only the dollar $x is substituted, dollar $y is substituted, but this entire string is just assigned to A. So the words um, do not break here, essentially it is just one continuous form. Now the second case where um, it will not break is the curly braces essentially. The curly braces themselves is considered as one unit wherever you are using curly braces it is used it is considered as just one word. So anything between the, the curly braces is one word. I want you to understand this concept because we will revisit this over and over again um, later on. So um, that is another one. The third one is the backslashes which uh, quote special characters. So here set a word backslash empty with 
backslash and backslash dollar and backslash and space this entire thing is treated as just one word. And then the backslash also can escape new line. So, um, so when we say like I mean when we end like um, one two three four and then space backslash and then we go to five six seven eight. This is just considered as one word. This is one two three four five six seven eight with no break here or because of the backslash the backslash is just uh, escaping the new line so it is a continuation character now one more thing is um, the substitutions don't change the word structure so we here as an example we set this um, a as two words and then when we say like set b as dollar a it's not going to change the word structure itself. So this is as a treated as one word, it still be assigned to B. So there is no um, nothing there. Now let's look at some of the tickle substitution rules um, and uh, and parsing. One thing is the tickle substitution rules are fairly simple and are absolute. So here are some of the examples. So here we do set A twenty two column set B thirty three. This is okay because we have a column so that we know that actually this is one command and this is another command. Now we have a command uh, comment comment is always like preceded by um, the hash symbol and here hash this is the command this is also okay because this happens in a new line and with the first character as the uh, hash now when we say like set a 22 hash same thing this is a wrong one wrong usage because there is no break and basically now you can say that actually a is uh, having like two or more words and um, all these are arguments but the set a has can set can take only like two arguments basically. So this is really not a um, valid syntax and it comes with an error. To correct this one we need to include a semicolon in between where we are now breaking this into two commands and then the second command is happens to be just a comment comment line okay. So the bottom line is essentially the parser looks at the commands only once essentially does not treat okay now that there is a command line starting so maybe this kind of command and basically you know, if it is treated as a command it does not do that. And um, so as a result what happens is um, we cannot uh, write expressions um, in just single command. We have to use multiple commands sometimes. We will talk about one one such example um, slightly later on. Um, but I, I will I would like to give you and motivate you on that example. Um, and one thing to note is actually like that that particular kind of um, version has never been written as a single command, or we cannot find a way to write that as a single command. Sometimes um, things get hairy basically like when we put this um, curly braces with square brackets. So the curly brace essentially is a way to that we saw earlier that is to combine words into one here it prevents the breaks and then look at the, the square bracket within basically so that is to evaluate that expression so it is a command substitution. So now uh, we will go into the command syntax. So the tickle essentially like I mean what we learnt was the commands are words separated by white space um, so as it is shown here 
and the first word is a function and the, all the others are arguments only functions apply meaning to those arguments and it is always a single pass tokenizing and substitution um, and then the substitution can take two forms one is a variable substitution the other one is a command substitution the dollar causes variable uh, you know substitution or variable interpolation and then the square brackets cause the command substitution or the command interpolation to prevent the word breaks we can use three main uh, things or you can also extend it to the fourth one the first one is using the quotes that prevents the word breaks and then we can use the curly braces that also prevents all the interpolations and then the backslash um, escapes all the special characters so including uh, any word breaks so this is another way that uh, we can uh, avoid the uh, word break and then the another key thing that uh, we are always talking about is that tickle has no grammar whatsoever. So now let us look at some more uh, substitutions. So here um, we can use eval for another level of expansion. So and then um, we can also uh, use command like format for complex arguments. So exec rm star dot o basically this uh, executes this uh, particular command. So again, this itself is a command that takes one two arguments, and then the first argument being another command that gets executed. And here we say basically like you know, star dot o no such file because there is no meaning to the style dot o and then if you say um, globe star dot o that gives the two files which are in the directory which is a dot o and b dot o now if you say basically exec rm and then execute this command also using the command substitution square brackets yeah it comes up with that and then with, uh, it says um, the no such file or directory because it is treated as just one um, one full um, word so it tries to find the file name called a0 dot o space b dot o and it comes up with no such file. So in order to delete these two files in this directory we need to use this eval uh, function. So when we say eval then we say exec rm glob um, dot, uh, star dot o this works correctly and essentially we can now remove these two files. So eval is used as another level of expansion. And there are other ways of writing this also I mean um, uh, this is like just using like just one um, line you can also split this whole thing into multiple lines. And then you can also like execute the same same things. Anyway, this is one um, challenge I'm going to give you: how to get this without using the eval, but using multiple lines. So try that out. We can discuss uh, in the next class. Now I want to uh, talk about the tickle expressions. Basically, it is more C-like int and double um, you can think of this as integer and floating point um, so we will see like how this works 
the command variable substitutions all occur within the expression itself and um, it is used in expr if and other commands. So what do we mean by the, the command and the variable substitutions and how are these expressions um, done. So here is some sample commands set B5 so the result is 5. Now we have this command called EXTR dollar B times 4 minus 3 so the answer is 17 because it is a Five. This gets uh, substituted with five, so it's a variable substitution. So um, that is um, twenty minus three is seventeen. Now we can also say, like I mean, some logical operation which is dollar b less than or equal to two, and since it is not, it returns a false value, which is actually zero. In um, tickle, zero is always false. And anything other than zero is always true. So just keep that in mind. Now here we also say like I mean from cos function basically two times dollar b multiplied by a. Here you can see that actually it is the floating point number. It automatically converts that into floating point number because one of them happens to be the floating point number and usually it is it calculates as uh, any any data type until the type changes when the type changes it keeps that the new type um, meaning and then the president is essentially like I mean uh, integer has the lowest president and then the floating point has uh, higher presidents in the EXPR statement. So if you put a floating point up front everything is computed as a floating point number if you put the floating point towards the end then um, until that time it is computed as an integer and then towards the end it is turned into floating point. Um, we will see some examples as to how this will affect. Now the other one is um, EXPR dollar B times fact 4. Now here you notice that actually like I mean it's in between the square brackets. So this is um, command substituted basically it computes this fact 4 and then it uh, replaces that with fact 4 and then times five, uh, the dollar B. So here this is also like substituted. So it is 5 times 4 factorial which becomes 120. So the bottom line is tickle will promote integers to reals when needed all the values translated to you know, the same types and then here also like you can notice that actually the EXPR command knows about the types and the tickle does not tickle is still it is just a collection of words. So Imagine right, so it's just a collection of words, and still it is very powerful. And today, a lot of programs actually um, run with this. So now let's uh, look at some more examples to understand EXPR in more detail. So the first one is fairly simple. You, know, you guys can answer five plus six by two. So six by two is evaluated, which is three, and then basically added to five. We get the eight. Now the next one is five point zero plus six by two. Again, since this is a real number, everything is converted into real, and then we get an answer of eight point zero, which is a real number. Now it gets slightly interesting. So now the next one is five divided by two plus six. So it evaluates 5 divided by 2 which is actually 2.5 but since this is an integer it leaves these two out so it is just 2 and then when it adds to 6 it is 8. Now this expression again so if you look at it basically it is uh, again 5, 5 divided by 2 which is 2.5 
plus 6.0, but since when it computes this, it's still a, a integer data type, so it does not use this. No, plus 6 it adds and then that becomes 8.0. Now the interesting thing is instead of putting 6.0 I put 5.0 divided by 2 plus 6. Now you look at this actually this is already a real number. So the answer also should be real which is now 2.5 now plus 6.0 will give you 8.5. So look at these two expressions they are exactly identical but those two have two different answers. So this is another caveat that uh, you have to um, always adhere to when writing tickle uh, programs um, the data type actually changes as uh, it goes. So if you have like a variable substitution all over and at some point it turns into like a floating point you get a different answer than if it was just a real number. Uh, if it's just an integer, okay. So now let's uh, talk about um, the tickle arrays. Um, in general, um, since we are using strings and uh, words and etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, the tickle arrays are always associated arrays. The index can be anything that you want, it need not be just a um, integer number, it can be anything that you want. For example, here set x Fred. So the array representation is x followed by the index. Here the index is called Fred, and we set that to 44. Now we say set x2 is this expression which is dollar fred dollar x fred so here the command is the, the variable is substituted to 44 and then the command substitution happens because of the square brackets so this expression is evaluated and you get 50 as the answer and that is assigned to x2. So now if you want to print out the the name so here the, the arrays are basically like this is the name and value. So to print out the name we just say array names and the array name is x and it prints these two index uh, basically it's spread and two. So using this principle we can actually fake two dimensional arrays we do not need to have construct the two dimensional array but we can construct a single dimensional array and then take it as a two dimensional array. How do we do it? Here is an example. So here we say set a 1 comma 1 as 10. So it appears as if like I mean a is a two dimensional array with 1, 2, 3, 4 and then another 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we are making this 1, 1 as 10 and then 1, but in reality this is just one name so 1 comma 1 is a name that has value of 10 and 1 comma 2 is another name that has a value of 11. So if you print out the array names A then it prints out together which is 1.1 I mean 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2. So now we see that actually like commas can be included in names. So now let us look into the one of the things that we um, saw earlier in more detail. This is the um, expression a dollar a um, multiplied by cos uh, 2 um, star dollar b 2 multiplied by dollar b. So here actually this is evaluated all these things are basically like dollar a and dollar b are substituted. So whatever this value that they get substituted 
and then the EXPR is called after that basically. So it is substituted and then EXPR is called and then EXPR goes to cause and says that hey I do not know this value so recursively that goes back it gets evaluated then it goes back to expression and then you get this answer. So the difference here is in this one the dollar a and dollar b are substituted by the scanner before the EXPR is called whereas in this expression where we are saying EXPR notice that this curly braces and dollar b star fact 4 essentially here the dollar b substituted by the EXPR itself the reason is because of this and it needs to have a single word expression so it basically substitutes this so you get uh, again 5 into these get these are also like substituted so this is evaluated and you get find 120 so the expressions can get substituted more than once so here one example um, set b is backslash dollar a and then set a is 4 and then expr dollar b times 2 now you can see that actually the b gets first substituted with this a and then uh, it looks at the a and actually the a is also needs to be substituted so it is actually 4 times 2 equals 8. And some tickle operators can also work on strings. Um, for example, um, A is bill bill, EXPR dollar A less than and is going to be zero. And then uh, the less than, greater than, less than or equal to greater than equal equal and then not equal to we can all work on strings only thing is you have to caution yourself when the strings can also look like numbers in general the tickle is always like um, generating strings so when it is generating a number it can be just a string and you can also use the string compare function to compare any strings now let us uh, talk about the lists the lists are nothing but zero or more elements separated by white space again key component is the zero essentially it need not be just one it can be just zero and here red green blue this is a list essentially because it has a white space in it the curly braces and the backslashes are for grouping this we saw earlier so here a b c d e f and the c d e is enclosed in the curly braces so this is treated as just one unit so there are actually four words which is a b c d e and then f then we can also like use escape characters for grouping so here one escape and then space and then word this is grouped as one so this is one, two, and two. Only three words. Then we have some uh, list related commands, um, which are um, all these things: the concat, l index, l length, l search for each, l insert, l range, l sort, l append, list, and l replace. All these things are. Um, List related commands, and uh, one thing to note is all the indices will start with a zero. Uh, the end means the last element. So here, um, we use this function called l index. L index of this array with two. That the second one is actually goes from zero, one, two, and three. So the two is this big. CDE expression which is which will be output and then when we do the 
L sort of red, green, and blue. It does an alphabetic sort. So to put this as one, put this as two, and then put this as two. The lists actually are uh, very powerful uh, syntax in uh, uh, Tickle. We will learn more about uh, list actually, and there are some specific commands that will also I will also go through uh, for um, a tool like the Synopsis uh, tools. Um, so a sample command will be um, set stack is one, so that means that the stack gets warm. Now when we say like push stack red. The red is pushed ahead of one, so one is moved to the end, and then uh, red is pushed. And then, if you say push stack a fish with uh, curly braces, that gets precedence essentially as a curly braces, and then it puts the curly braces uh, um, a fish as the first uh, element, then red, then followed by one. And if you if you pop uh, the stack. Then it comes up as just a fish because it's only like the, the first element is popped and then the remaining ones are kept inside. So now the stack has red one, but a fish is uh, popped out. And then the push and pop are very short and uh, use list commands to do their work essentially. Now some more um, interesting facts about list. The true list meaning won't change when it is rescanned. Now let's look at this example where um, the first dollar animal, blue and dollar animal. This is not a list because there are variables here which may not be substituted. Now, fish, blue fish, red fish, blue fish, this is a list. Now, red escape fish, blue escape fish, this is not a list, but if you say just list red, this one, this gives you basically like red, and then it uh, puts this as a um, one collection and now this can be a list essentially since that is a word. So one thing is that commands and lists are closely related a command is actually a list and use eval to evaluate the list of list as a command. So in summary today we are learning more and more about um, tickle. Two things I want uh, you to take away here uh, from this uh, lecture are this uh, variable substitution and the command substitution. The variable substitution is using dollar as uh, the variable uh, as the marker for the variable. Uh, wherever you find like dollar um, variable name, it gets substituted with the real value. The commands themselves are uh, it uh, identifies the command. With uh, the square brackets, essentially. Um, so then uh, it uh, it substitutes these uh, actual scripts uh, whenever it finds a square bracket, and then evaluates uh, that result. And then one other key thing that we saw was uh, how does um, Tickle recognize um, uh, the words, essentially. Um, we know that actually like birds are um, distinguished by where they break essentially so they break with white spaces or uh, semicolons um, but there are some exceptions to the rule one is the double quotes prevents breaks curly braces prevent breaks and substitutions as well as backslashes um, and quote the special character and thus uh, um, eliminate the word separation. So um, this is another key thing that we saw. Uh, and then in the commands, actually, the first word is always the function and models are arguments. 
and uh, only the function apply meaning to the arguments and everything is done in single pass tokenizing uh, and substitution. So something to understand in EXPR is uh, EXPR command basically it uh, scans from left to right. Uh, it uses the same arithmetic evaluation techniques. Only thing to notice essentially where whenever it encounters uh, any argument which is a floating point, from that point onwards everything is computed in floating point. So this can cause some uh, serious headaches when you try to program. Um, and I want you to be aware of this when you write your own. And then we also learnt about lists and how to use the lists. Uh, we will revisit again in the next uh, lecture. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.